If you don't know Derek, well, it's at X Derek Lau, uh, co-founder GG Uncharted. We're going to be talking about Gangster Arena, but the first time that we had you back on the stream was back with Guild of Guardians. So walk us through a little bit about kind of your journey back then, entering the Web3 space, and now how you kind of got to doing uh, GG Uncharted. Yeah, uh, for sure. I'm glad to glad to chat again. It's been a while. Very, very glad to, to be here. Um, so my, so I, I got into Web3 in 2017. So I learned about Ethereum, Bitcoin, like read the white papers and thought it was kind of cool. Um, it was, and then when NFTs and smart contracts, like kind of when I first found out about them, that was when I started getting really hooked into the space. And so um, at the end of 2017, I started getting into CryptoKitties and I ended up being like the third biggest breeder of CryptoKitties. So ended up just- Wow, really? <laughs> this man went all in on that. Shit. Yeah, I went really deep. Uh, I had like 30,000 transactions. Um, I had scripts that I would run. And uh, so it was a lot of fun. And, and um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people in that community and learned a lot throughout that process as well, just about like how Web3 works, the different people in it. You know, um, back then there wasn't really even a, such thing as like NFT Twitter. <laughs> um, it was so early. And so I did that for a while. And then in 2019, that was when I got invited to join Immutable. Um, Someone who I worked with before, I uh, wanted me to join them. And so I did. And basically the mandate at Immutable was um, I was working directly with the co-founders to figure out how to add a new game to the platform. So it was kind of like, hey, here's here's a budget. Here's a small budget. Go and like add a game to Immutable. Um, so I kind of took that and ran with it and ended up uh, building out Guild of Guardians, which is a squad-based mobile RPG. So everything from like figuring out what the game would be to building out the team and the, the community and, and then like the NFTs and tokens and game and so on. So basically kind of got that project up and running off the ground. Um, and then Immutable later on also expanded. And so when Immutable expanded to work with more games, I ended up also working across like every game that Immutable partnered with and, and with a particular focus on everything uh, Web3 economy related. So I was helping kind of like these really strong Web Web two teams figure out like how the game needs to be different once you have assets in them. Um, so I did that for a while as well, and then ultimately left Immutable. I spent like four years at Immutable, and then left. Uh, took a bit of a break, and then started a new company, which is called Uncharted. So. Yeah, so that, that's kind of what, I, what I'm working on now and happy to, to dive more into that. Nice. I mean, that's crazy that you were that heavy within Crypto Kitties. Like, did you? <laughs> I mean, can, <laughs> can you give me back like the, the mind space? Because I remember when I first came into uh, the NFT space, it was Top Shot for me. And I remember thinking initially like, this is stupid. And then like a few days later, I checked and I was like, ah, let me buy a pack. And I was like, oh, okay, I can kind of see this. And then it took off. Like, what was it like in the early days for uh, Crypto Kitties? Yeah, I mean it was a very small community you know there were just just a few hundred people um there was very few nft projects open sea didn't exist right so all the all the trading was on on the crypto keys website i remember actually one of the like uh when open sea came out i remember a lot of crypto kitties people started using it not to trade but because the metadata on open sea refreshed faster than the crypto keys website so when you were breeding you could like go to the um go to OpenSea to see what you got before the CryptoKitties website showed you. So it was pretty, pretty funny um, like back back then how, how things worked. Um, but it was good. I, th I think uh, it was interesting also to see how vocal the community was as well. Like everyone, once you have these digital assets, everyone's like super involved and vocal. And now it's kind of the first time that I experienced that. Um, these days it's, it's super, super common and probably even more, more to the extreme, right? Um, and the other thing that was really interesting was everything around like communication as well. Like the the quality standards for communication from this like crypto kidneys community was pretty high. It's like that for labs had it pretty hard, to be honest, because everyone would ask for all these different things and they'll like kind of always ask for more. Um and so I also kind of, you know, saw how they handled it um and, and learned from them as well, like as as a community member. The aspect of people joining within the space we've had a lot of conversations today and we're going to get to gangster arena and gg uncharted more but i just want to kind of stick on this kind of you know back in the day with derek type <laughs> type segment if you will <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know i guess when i look at top shot that was the way that i got on board and i'm trying to look at the catalyst for why people got into that obviously there was yes. covid people getting more online um just general 
a curiosity of things online. But to go even before that, like you were saying that you were going to read in those papers of Bitcoin, Ethereum and everything early on. Like, I don't think most people yeah. did that. So how did the crypto kitties community and let me know if there was any other kind of big collections at the time, but how did that form from? Was it people that were just interested within crypto and specifically Ethereum in general, or was there some kind of catalyst or mantra for why that ended up getting traction? Yeah. 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 I mean, um, so I, I, I found it about Ethereum and Bitcoin through like a friend who I was working with at the time and they, they just kept shilling it. I think they were like day trading tokens and ICOs and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but so that's how I got into the space. I think it's pretty interesting. I think like the the common trend that I see even like with crypto kitties, but even afterwards is that people get into the space because they think it's like interesting. They want to try it out. Right. They think there's this new tech. They kind of like understand digital assets. Maybe they've like played games that have digital assets or whatever it is. Um, but I think often the the thing that makes people like stick into the space and get really deep into it is kind of like the money component which maybe is, is like a bit i don't know if it's like sad or not but like that that's also the nature of blockchain as well like it adds value to it that's why it's entertaining um so personally for me like when i got into the space one of the things i was thinking about was like how could i make money from this and, and i feel like many other people are similar like nba nba top shots um there's all this attention about it and the price was just going up and like that, that's what got people, get people talking about it. Like it ends up getting, they're talking about it at the NBA, right? They're, they're, they're commentators. And and um, I think something similar happened with CryptoKitties as well, where there was a lot of attention on it. And there was just like this speculation within the community that, you know, this thing's going mainstream and like there's an opportunity here, we're early. Um, and yeah, I'm mean, interested to see what you think as well. Like, what 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 has been the the view of like why people get into to and <laughs> every everybody today has talked <laughs> about the money aspect. Like hey, every time we bring this okay, up yeah. remotely, everybody's like, <laughs> but yeah, it's it, is it like a healthy thing? Is it something that we ever kind of break away from that mantra? Is it is it fine that everything is super hyper financialized? Right, right, yeah, yeah, exactly. What do you think? I mean, I think that it makes people care about it. Like, I don't think there was a time before getting into. Uh, crypto as a whole that I cared about math or money at all. And I'm talking about like investments, uh, going deeper in like understanding taxes and when not to do anything. Like, I don't think I would have had any knowledge or gotten into it if it wasn't for this space, because I cared like, sure. You know, there's commercials and people say, Oh, like invest for the future, yada, yada. But I mean, I think it takes something extra to make people actually jump into it and not just kind of mm. view it from the outside. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and I, my, my hypothesis is that, like, usually it's a, it's a small win that gets you hooked. So, like, you do yeah. something, like, it's either, like, you buy some luck, right? Like, maybe the market's just going up, so everyone's winning. Like, if you, you, you get a small win, and then you're like, okay, this is awesome. Like, and then you get into this, like, you, you dive really deep into, into everything. Um, so, I mean, that, that's how it was for, for me, and, and I think that's how it is for, for a few other people that I've spoken to as well. So I might get back into some of these other just general topics here, but let's jump into Gangster Arena. And what I did before was I haven't played the game yet, but I went through the process of downloading it and I recorded my first 60 seconds of it, if you will. So uh, I want to get you to kind of walk us through that first little bit because I, I felt a little bit confused. And just in case anybody else is seeing that, uh, I think this is going to be awesome. But what is Gangster Arena before we show that little clip? Yeah, so Gangster Arena is an idle DJ game. So uh, it's it's actually quite relevant to what we're just talking about. Like, so Uncharted is is a studio, and part of our thesis is that blockchain games should have money in them, and money should be part of the fun. Uh, like, we re we really want to embrace uh, blockchain in in our games, and that's why we built Uncharted. And and our first game is Gangster Arena, and our first game is really trying to like prove and test that out. Um, I don't know if I can actually screen share with that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, audience. for sure. Just let me know, and I will. I will. Let me let me bring uh, up your thing here. See, this, this could not work. No, nope, that's cool. We're we're here. We're testing on the fly. Love it. Um. Uh. Yep. Okay. Cool. I know, Perfect. I don't know what you see here. You got it. Yep. Uh, this good. Yep. 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 Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I don't know why I chose this, but not 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 my video. Um. So this is Gangster Arena. It's. Uh, an idle DJ game, and the premise of it is that you're kind of a mob boss, and you're trying to build up your gang in order to uh, compete for rewards. So the game is about like competing for money, 
And at a high level, the way it works is like the money that players spend goes, 100% of it goes back to the prize pool. So for season one, right now we have 110 ETH of um, money that players have spent and it's, it's in the prize pool right now. I, I we, we launched like a day and a half ago. So this is pretty, pretty recent. So, so that um, it's 110 ETH, like Ethereum. Ethereum, correct. No, with no shot. Jeez, that's a hell of a prize pool. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's like one of the biggest prize pools right now in gaming. <laughs> uh, in one three games, probably. Um, and the game is, uh, I guess it's, I'll, I'll kind of walk through how it works. So the idea is you're building up this gang in order to win leaderboard rewards. And the, the game is seasonal. So um, there's a big timer that you can see here. And basically when the time reaches zero, that's when the game ends and the money get, gets paid out. And and like I said before, like the money that players spend goes is what feeds into this prize pool. So, so can, can I, not, to, not to cut you off here, but I'm, I'm yeah. very curious because I, I think just from somebody that's viewing this for the first time, can I bring up the uh, video of my first playthrough where it tells you the like information just oh, so yeah, we have yeah, that yeah, and yeah, then yeah, go yeah. into it. So give me a second. Yeah. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see my stream or if you're able to just to bring it up on your end. Uh, um, I'll, I'll bring it up separately. And I'll, uh, I'll pause as we're going throughout this. So the way this works is you have to, if you're doing it on, is it only a mobile? Because it looked like that was on desktop for you. Uh, it's on mobile or desktop. Okay, it's cool. So it's yeah, it's yeah. a little bit of both. So on mobile, I what you have to do is you have to put the website and set it as a homepage. So then it looks like an app. It'll pop up. And then Derek, the first thing that it said is, do you want to set password for your embedded wallet? But I don't have MetaMask or anything on my phone. So is that something you just skip or do you encourage people to uh, add yeah. the password initially? So good question. So uh, it's up to you. So, so the way it works is that uh, you log into the game with your Twitter account, and then a wallet gets made for you that's tied to that Twitter account. So gotcha. this is not a MetaMask wallet. So this okay, is just gotcha. like your own wallet. So if you want to make it more secure, you can set a password. If not, you can also um, not do that and probably add it later as well. So okay, I, can, but I haven't set one for mine. It's so make it easier. I, I don't know if the stream is delayed, but if you see how it says like tutorial by Gangster, do you want to just run us through this? And I'll pause every few seconds as we're going through. Uh, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And if it's uh, if it's too delayed, let me know because <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't think there's a delay, but maybe maybe there is. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Yeah. So gangsters are the like core NFTs of the game, um, and you what what you do is you buy them and they will passively like run up and down and rob the bank, and generate this a fiat token for you, which is a tradable token. Amazing. All right, we'll scroll ahead a little bit and. and this is the only thing that players would like buy in the game with ETH. So, so this is the thing that, that kind of contributes to the prize pool. Okay. Yeah. And the next up it shows buy gangsters with earning rate, reputation, and daily ROI. Yes, yes, yes. So this is uh it's just walking the players through like Here's how you would buy it. Just, just so players get familiar with that. Easy sample. You get all of them processing, hiring one gangster. Okay, boom, you're good to go. And then they start running back and forth here. Exactly. So once you buy it, you have it in your wallet. Um, you can do whatever you want with it. But otherwise, it's earning uh, fiat tokens for you, which you can claim. So you can claim that. You can log out of the app and come back in, and it will still be kind of like um earning it's a bit it's a bit like staking and earning tokens gotcha and then we have the goons getting brought up <laughs> yeah 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 so so the so once you have the tokens in the game you can spend them on two things so the first thing you can buy is a goon which is basically a unit that helps you earn more tokens so you can invest in these goons to earn more tokens um yeah so that, that's kind of the the first thing nice And then it just shows on the side. So you have the safe house, you have the gangster, and then the goon. And then you're able to yep. buy the goon. And then it gives you a decent bit of bonuses. And then upgrading yeah. your safe house with fiat raises your reputation significantly, but doesn't increase your fiat earnings. So try to upgrade your safe house. Yeah, yeah. So so safe houses are the other thing that you can buy with fiat. And the main difference is that basically you can think about it as goons help you earn more but don't help you 
climb the leaderboard much, which is what you need to like win the ETH at the end. Whereas safe houses don't help you earn, but help you climb the leaderboard quite a lot. So that's the trade-off that players have to make. Interesting. But the, the leaderboard two, is what you want to sorry. do to get paid for the leaderboard, right? You want to be as high that's as possible. That's one way. For, that's one way for sure. I mean, I think that the part of the idea of the game is that there should there are multiple ways to play. Um, and now that it's been going on for a day, I can tell you like what's happened so far, <laughs> right? Um, so for example, like some players may just buy gangsters, like get tokens and sell them because tokens are tradable. Right. Right. Um, I think uh, players also have to like just dis- make a decision about whether they want to buy safe houses or goons as well because they do slightly different things. And um, the the way it works is that the price of these two units also fluctuates depending on how many people have bought them. So if everyone's buying goons, which is, I think was what, what was happening yesterday, then safe houses are relatively more like much more cheap. Um, as, and vice versa, it can go either way. So how did you get people to feel confident with this? Is it something that you guys kind of have been building this reputation and people are aware of it? Because I've always found it interesting when we have new things that are launched and people, you know, kind of like the the meme coin pre-sales right now. You're like, here's $350,000. Yeah. You're like, okay, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a good question. I mean, I think the fact that... Uh, we're not so the fact that for this first season, a hundred percent of the the money that players spend goes back to players. I think makes it a pretty even playing field. And also, um, we did a demo, like a play test for this before. So a few people got the chance to play around with it and like got, you know familiar with some of the mechanics. Um, and and ultimately, like the I think that the thing about this game is that there's there's no necessarily right or wrong way to play. A lot of it's about um game theory and what other players will do. That's one core idea. So as an example, we have, like in the bottom left, there's a mechanic called Gang Wars. And you can, um, and the idea here is like, you have these gangsters and you have options. You can choose whether you want to uh, use the gangsters to earn more, you can choose whether you want them to defend or you can raid. And um, the outcome depends on what everyone else does. So like if you attack another player and they and they, they, they have put nothing to defense, then you steal a bunch of their tokens. Or whereas if you, um, you know, let's say you attack another player and they've put everything in defense, then you don't get anything from them and you potentially lose some gangsters. So there's a lot of the games really about uh, like game theory and, and there's, you know, earning mechanics, there's arbitrage, there's, you know, potential for people to team up and attack the same person or like buy, buy units from other people last minute to take over, you know, first person leaderboard. There's a lot of interesting things that could happen and it's a bit unpredictable. And how come you guys decided to go this route in terms of like making something? Because obviously, you know, you've had the big experience with Immutable and you've been able to see the behind the scenes of what's worked and what's not pretty closely. And so what, what made you decide on this genre uh, and then this kind of style? Yeah, I mean, so we, uh, uh, so the thesis for Uncharted is that like crypto itself is one big game that people quite like enjoy playing. And all about risk and reward and strategy and so on like very pvp and so we wanted to turn what people like about crypto into these actual gaming experiences um and we believe we can make them more fun more rewarding and also more safe as well because there's a lot of like scams and rugs in the space like a lot of extractors um and so that's that's the idea and so when we were thinking about what game to build first um because this is our first game and we plan to have multiple games. When we're thinking about what game to build first, we were thinking very much about the target audience, which for us right now are crypto natives. And we, we, we believe that, you know, people in crypto want to, like, make money. So, like, they're competing to make money. And that's part of the game. There's many ways to, to do that. Um, they're also very, like, time poor as well. So that's why this game is very idle. Like, you can see that um, I can just spend like 30 seconds a day doing stuff and that's enough to play the game like people probably spend more time thinking about what to do than actually doing things in the game and that's by design like we don't want players to grind or anything like that it's very idle um and it's we've also tried to make it like simple there's only a a few units like there's there's very few choices in the game right there's um 
and and our hope is that like the simplicity also makes it more inviting for, for people because people don't want to like learn too much about a game um they just want to get the high level concept the different ideas and then come up with their own st- like approach and strategy so, so that's kind of the some of the thinking here uh, behind this first game so can you show again and just kind of like pretend that you're somebody that's completely new because i i feel like i'm a little bit lost so maybe i've been doing this <laughs> for too long on the stream but so you have the claim button you have the money on the side and then you have the guns with the leaderboard and everything pretend that you just open this all up for the first time what's what do you do yeah sure so so for example like let's say i open it up i would i would um i would buy, buy a gangster right and, those cost point oh um, one i just saw just for anybody. Yeah, so I just I just spent some money and put in the price we're just saying. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> listen, there we go. Congratulations <laughs> to the gangster. Okay, so so just to um, know that though, so it is like point oh one if you are wanting to play the game, there's not like a free to play version right now. We don't have that right now. That's something gotcha. that we're okay. considering okay. for the future. Yeah. So you can see that I've bought it. I've uh I can view the transaction. Great. Got it, got it another gangster here. It's up going up and down. And then I would basically claim tokens. So I would claim tokens down here. Um, so now I've got more more tokens that I would have in the game. And then I would use those tokens to try to progress in the game. So like the way you progress is like you buy goons or you buy safe houses. Currently I don't have enough tokens yet. Um, otherwise I would show you and buy one of these. And and then basically I'll kind of try to build up my gang from there. right? And I think one of the things I would do is I would, you know, keep a close eye on the leaderboard to see who's around me and like how what it would take to overtake other people and i would you know decide whether or not it's worth it decide how i want to play um I that's would also, spicy that's really spicy i like the idea yeah. you can be able to see everything transparently like that exactly yeah and and sometimes like you know it might not be worth it sometimes it might be worth it you, you, you have to decide for yourself um but then other players are also unpredictable so like you know a lot of it depends on what other players would do um and then I would also, now that I've got a few gangsters, I'll also like try to use the raid mechanic probably to to try to get an advantage. So like look at so right now in the when you go to raids, you can see other players. So you can see like, for example, this person, you can see what they've been doing. So you can see this person last time they put um they put all their units into earning, which means they they made a lot. They made like four hundred thousand tokens uh as a bonus. And they don't have any they don't they have like no one defending right so if 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 i was to attack them i would actually steal a majority of this tokens for myself i would i would be able to steal like not to target this person out but like i'll be able to steal a lot of these all these tokens right and so like i would probably like look for opportunities to to figure out like who i should attack as well to try to get more and um i think i would also it'd also be different like if, if i was all the way at the very top like if i was a rank one player i would probably play differently because you know, I might think be thinking that other players are going to attack me. Like, what should I do? Um, things things could be different. Whereas, like, probably players at the, at the middle and the bottom will, um, yeah, be also thinking differently. And you know, I'd also be looking at the uh, the the price of of the tokens as well. So, like, I'd be looking at okay, now they've got six thousand tokens. Like, what, what how, how much are they worth? So right now, that that's worth zero point zero zero one, right? Um, and some players might just like sell the tokens. Some players might alternatively like see that the, the if everyone's selling the token, then maybe other people will um, see that the to- that the this token is really cheap and then buy a bunch of the tokens. Like they might spend ETH to buy a bunch of tokens, um, and then they would go and like buy some some units in the game to keep keep progressing. So so I think that those are the key decisions. There's only really a few. Um, but there is, as you can see, like there's probably some complexity that to it if you want to get to to that level. That's sweet that you guys have that, and also like the uh, idle perspective with it. And so, I mean, I guess if you're talking grander scale, is this something that's supposed to be just you know for a month of playtime, or do you have any kind of bigger ideas if this uh, continues to uh, gain adoption? So the plan is that we we kicked off season one, which is our first ever season. Um, and we do plan to have more seasons and i think most likely what we'll do is that we will see how the season goes and then make some changes to the second season to make the game like better more interesting probably make it different on purpose as well 
so it doesn't feel like it's the same and people have to like rethink how they approach the game and then um you know make basically make season two bigger and better so nice. that's that's the plan for for gangster arena right now and then in the in the future we we also plan to have other games so um these these are things that we're kind of like working on in the background but they would all fall under the like uncharted brand and ip and so the goal here is that uncharted is the ecosystem that we're building up you know we'll have many games on them we'll have our own games we'll uh, hopefully eventually also like work with other developers to, to help them with their games as well and then this will be just the place that you go to for like games with money though for, for games with money is part of the fun <laughs> true true the the love of the crypto space and all that that's that's amazing okay so derek what i've done and i'm not sure if you've seen it all with some of the other guests but i have kind of a rapid fire question segment that i would love to ask you and basically i'm just gonna kind of make a statement or bring up a topic and then whether 60 seconds, five minutes, whatever you feel is the appropriate time uh, you need to respond to them, uh, then you're free to uh, do however you would like. So, uh, number one, Yuga acquires Moonbirds. Am I, am I just giving my opinion? Yes. All oh, right. Okay. Um, probably there's some good like financial arbitrage there. That's why they did it. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> you just got to keep it short and simple. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, as in like that's 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 my guess. I don't know, I don't have any inside info, but like, you know, it, it was probably just a good deal, like financially. And then so and you know, um Kevin wanted out and so, so <laughs> it, 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 the acquisition, brought the community, brought the brought the, brought the IP over. All right, next NFT is getting completely rinsed with the broader crypto market pump. Yeah, this one's really interesting. I think people People really value liquidity, I think. Like, and tokens are, are just so much more liquid than NFTs. Um, and and so I think that's that's number one. And number two is there's there's very few new buyers for NFTs, because there's um, there's actually not that many new people coming into crypto, despite the prices increasing. That's my impression, at least from what I've seen. Like, generally, agree, like you don't yeah. see many new faces, right? Um, and so the. There's not many like new people looking to join these communities either. And so and so people are just if they're looking about like if people are thinking about where should they deploy money, then yeah, they're looking elsewhere. Like you usually for more for more liquid opportunities. The trend of projects on other chains that have success now launching an ordinals collection. <laughs> um yeah, I mean it's like leveraging the hype. So good good for them, I think. Order I think is pretty interesting. Um, yeah, the main challenge is whether whether like whether it'll be like they'll still be com committed to, to doing stuff there or like what the promises made that are are an ordinal. Have you seen any ordinals that are saying, hey, like we offer anything beyond just like an ordinal? <laughs> uh because I know, but I'm not super deep in it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm not either. Stuff. I'm not either, but I just think it's kind of um, funny. Yeah. All right, next up, Meme Coin Mania. People people want to 100x somehow. <laughs> is my takeaway. People want people see see someone else doing it on their timeline and they want to they want the experience. Um yeah, it's it's a uh, it's interesting and I I guess some people think it speaks to to the generation of <laughs> to the generation as well. That's a that's that's a good point. I never even thought about the the generational differences, but I guess everybody, if they think they can 100x, will do it. All right, uh, ETFs impact on the broader crypto market. Yeah, this one's huge. I think um, there's so much institutional money, like and and the, the institutional money, like they're looking for places to put it because they need to make money for the people who have put, who have deposited. And so I think ETFs legitimize crypto a lot and make it so much easier for institutions to to buy um, crypto. So definitely, definitely huge. Probably one of the main catalysts for like the cycle right now. And finally, the trend of many collections making Fortnite experiences. Uh, um. Depends what what you mean by 
collections, probably like NFT collections, just have to make something to be deliver quote unquote delivering value uh, to their holders. And so like making a like mini game in, an, in another platform probably is smart and easy, I guess, um, depending on what it is though, like I don't know how many people would play it if they're not familiar with the IP. That's fair. I, I think one of the things that I just found weird, like, I mean, it's a good point you bring up of like projects need to look like they're just doing, <laughs> doing something uh, in general, but it, it's like the Fortnite experiences. I feel like you don't even get people to be able to play them. Like, unless you have some kind of like inside or able to get people on the dashboards. Like I have a video that I might bring up after uh, we let you go here in a few minutes. That's like BMW. And like, the, the head of metaverse for BMW on LinkedIn is like, here's our experience. And then they're tagging this yeah. Fortnite map. And like, I join it. And I'm like, okay, so there's like one person that's randomly walking around here and it's this racing track and everybody's hyping up Fortnite as this big metaverse thing. And like, I get it to a point, but you know, for these web three communities, same kind of thing. It's like, all right, what's the, what's the rationale for it? So, I mean, from your perspective, would you ever make a Fortnite map for gangster arena per se, or is that something that you just think wouldn't be viable? Um, I, I, we probably wouldn't just because where it doesn't fit in well with our strategy. Like, well, I don't know if, if like, like you said, like, we don't know if, if people actually would want to play it. Okay. Um, or if it's just like shows, shows progress. Um, I do think it could, could work though for like other, other teams and studios. The, the main challenge is I think you need to, it needs to appeal beyond crypto. And like, if you lean too heavily into the the crypto IP, then no one, like, people probably get put off by it, or they're just kind of confused. <laughs> like, what, what is this ape? Like, why am I playing this ape? It's funny to see the differences, though, between, like, stuff that was Web 3 based versus, like, Web 2 based. And I always, I had the notion, and maybe this was arrogant, I feel like my tone is changing a little bit on it, but I was like, you know, I think that the, the Web 3 generated IP is going to overtake the ones that aren't, and that looks that looks dumb as hell right now. Like that is, that is not what's happening. You have like tiny subset of communities, but how do you foresee that flush of like blockchain based, uh, kind of transcending beyond? Cause obviously we've had that like very briefly with top shot board eight, but how long do you think until it like truly transcends where it's not just this awkward niche of an IP? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it'll, it'll take like, a uh, it'll take a hit game where blockchain like really matters i think so um probably if, if we're talking if, if the question is like what what is it going to take for you know normal more 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 normies for example to get into web3 uh then yeah probably just like a really good game that has a really deep tradable economy behind it um that'll get the most people into it but i think the like personally, I, th I think the the thing that needs to happen there is that the blockchain part needs to actually mean something. Like it, it you don't like if like if someone built another Fortnite today, and it had blockchain on, like no one would play it still because people just would keep playing Fortnite, even if it was just as good. Um, like they're already used to Fortnite, or their friends are on it. Like it's it's actually really hard. That it needs to be that you know someone builds a another version of WoW, but actually, or like so something some other game and the, the blockchain elements actually matter. So that's kind of my thesis, and that's also part of why like Uncharted is doubling down on um, blockchain and money as part as being part of the fund, because we think that's the unique thing that value, that blockchain does. You know, blockchain financializes everything, so it makes sense that it would financialize games as well. Um, and that's kind of what we're, what we're trying, to, trying to do. Well, I wish you all the success with that. As we're wrapping up here, is there any kind of final thing, one last rundown of what GG Uncharted is and what Gangster Arena is? Um, I think, yeah, I mean, if, if I'd love for people, if people are interested, just follow along, like follow our Twitters, uh, which is, yeah, at GG Uncharted or at Gangster Arena. Amazing. All right. Well, Derek, thanks so much for jumping on here. Hopefully we'll chat again soon and uh, hope that we uh, see Gangster Arena all around here. And the so so final question, sorry, that I just kind of thought of uh, okay. for Crypto Slam per se, they have all the stats of like how much volume is happening like on a blockchain per se. Is there anything uh, you've seen out there that like highlights certain games uh, and like how much has been put into them? Like, is there any sites that you've seen that was good for like insights in that regard? Yeah, the um, 
So DAP radar shows uh, game volume and number of wallets. It shows on-chain data. Basically. Nice. DAP okay, radar. cool. I got to check um, that out. It, it might be missing it for some games that have a lot of like off-chain data, <laughs> like off-chain players and users. Um, but it will show a lot of the on-chain stuff. So yeah, definitely check that out. Amazing. Okay, thank you. Sorry for that last question. <laughs> I was just no, thinking no, about no. it. But no, I appreciate you. Okay, cool. We will chat soon, Derek. Thanks again so much. Cool. Awesome. Great to chat. Great to chat. All right. See you later. 100%. Peace, peace. All right. There is Darek.